to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to A Well-Designed Business. It's time to start thinking about high point market, folks. Yes, it is. I know, it's sort of like when you see Christmas decorations in October, right? You're thinking, it can't be time, is it? But it is. This fall, market dates are October 19th to the 23rd, and registration opens July 28th. And we, if you are listening in the future, are talking about 2019. So why do you need to think about it now? Well, first of all, the hotels are already getting booked. I mean, seriously, I tried looking this week and I was surprised to find that many are already closed out. And secondly, it's time to map out your trip. It's time to get on the website at highpointmarket.org and see who the brands are, make your calls for appointments and get on the email list so you can get notified of all the new product launches, the panels and the keynote series in the theater. You don't want to miss a thing. All right. And just in case if you're not from the U.S. or you're not familiar with High Point Market and this is news to you, well, let me tell you a little bit about it. High Point Market is the driving force for the home furnishings industry. It is unrivaled in both its size and scope. It was founded in 1909 in the Piedmont region of North Carolina, and High Point Market is the world's longest running home furnishings event. Two times a year, Every October and April, High Point Market attracts more than 75,000 retailers, interior designers, and service providers from more than 100 countries. They come to shop nearly 2,000 exhibitor showrooms across 180 buildings, and it equals more than 12 million square feet of space. And did I mention it's a heck of a lot of fun, (laughs) okay? High Point Market features more made-in-the-USA furnishings than any other trade show as well as a variety of imported goods spanning every style, category, and price point. So that tells you a bit about the story, the value, and the importance of High Point. But I have three ladies with me on the show today who are going to give you even more details on the reasons to attend High Point Market and some of the best tips to make the most of your visit. This show originally ran last February 2019, and because I know the information is key in helping you make the most of your trip, I felt it was worth repeating. When you do go to High Point Market, please be sure to stop by Kravitz Showroom. It's located in Market Square, number 217 on the second floor. I'll give you a tip. They have the best party ever, and it's always on the Sunday night of market. You don't need an invite. I mean, I sort of just invited you, didn't I? (laughs) But... Please go, and if you do go, do two things for me. Please be sure to find me, because I always go to the Kravit party on Sunday night, and say hi. And the second thing is, please be sure to tell the Kravit family and the Kravit team how much you love the podcast and how glad and grateful you are that they sponsor it. Would you do that for me? Okay. In the meantime, have you heard about Kravit's new quick ship program? Yes, this is the latest Kravit furniture smart solutions for designing spaces. Now you can order from a huge selection of Kravit smart frames and finishes and have it made in, drum roll please, two weeks. That's right. You heard me right. Two weeks. How about that? Kravit custom quality furniture made to order in two weeks. This includes sofas, sectionals, sleepers, chairs, ottomans, dining chairs, all in over 100 fabric upholstery options in all kinds of textures, colors, and styles. Do you have your trade account? If not, go to Kravit.com and open yours today. And if you already have your trade account, go to your Kravit eDesign platform and see all the details for yourself. Alrighty, let me tell you about today's guest. 
Ashley Grigg is the Director of Marketing and Communications for the High Point Market Authority. High Point Market is the largest home furnishings trade show in the world, and Ashley manages many of their projects, including media relations, educational programming, social media, and digital promotions. Ashley has over 13 years of experience in marketing and event management, and she puts every bit of her talent and her passion into her position at the High Point Market Authority. Having met and worked with Ashley several times now, I can tell you firsthand, our experience as attendees is enhanced because of Ashley's dedication to making it the best it can be for each of us. Jeannie Chung is with us today, too. Jeannie is a luxury interior designer and retailer based in Southern California. In addition to heading up her own interior design firm, Jeannie owns a retail and a to-the-trade showroom in Pasadena, California, which has become a favorite go-to destination for both designers and design enthusiasts who seek a unique and artfully edited selection of new and vintage home furnishings and accessories. Through her design blog, Cozy Stylish Chic, Jeannie has become recognized as an influencer in the industry, and she frequently collaborates with brands and manufacturers. She's a regular speaker on trade show designer panels and has served as High Point Market Style Spotter. Jeannie participated in the Pasadena Showcase House of Design in 2017 and in 2018 served on the board of the ASID Pasadena Chapter. And Lisa Mendy joins us today as well. Lisa is the founder and principal of Lisa Mendy Design, based in Charlotte, North Carolina, which opened in 1998. Lisa has built a reputation as one of the South's leading luxury designers, and her work has been featured in many well-known national shelter and lifestyle magazines. As a designer and tastemaker, Lisa works with brands and has served as an Authlux Design Guild member for House of Raw for 2018, the Thermador Design Council, and the Design Council for DSB Luxury in 2016. Lisa is an allied member of ASID and NKBA. She also writes the popular blog, The Design Connector, where she is currently kicking off a brand new series which will chronicle the renovation of her own home, sharing all her favorite kitchen and bath products as well as the actual renovation process with her readers. It's time to get to the show. You might want to listen to it once and then listen again later when you can take some notes. Well, ladies, thank you so much for joining me on A Well-Designed Business today. How are you? We're good. Hey, Luann, this is Ashley. Hi, Luann, this is Jeannie. Hey, Luann, this is Lisa. So I am so happy to have you three ladies. I feel like I am in the middle of High Point Royalty right now, I'm just going to (laughs) say. Today, what we're going to do is we are going to address something that I have to say is really... Uh, you, uh, Jeannie and Lisa, are you in the Facebook groups? I would say usually every single market, every single spring, every single fall, about a month before market comes, in come all the questions. I'm a brand new designer. I've never been to market. Should I do it? Should I not do it? Like, I'm not sure how to do it. And it is, it's an overwhelming thing to think about if you are brand new. So today, we're going to talk about that, and we're going to try and pull back the curtain on this a little bit so that uh, newer interior designers are not uh, intimidated to, to go, and more seasoned designers, I'm sure, are going to learn something from the two of you since you guys are market pros, and of course, Ashley, who's there with boots on the ground there. So first of all, let's just start with the actual question of why should an interior designer invest time and money to come to High Point Market? Who wants to take that first of the three of you? I can take it. This is Jeannie. Okay. And uh, for me, um, High Point is the, the best and the most comprehensive market. And not only am I there to source, but I'm there to network and learn. Um, they have a huge, you know, High Point Market has a huge breadth of product, um, a ton of networking opportunities. Um, I go there and I develop brand collaborations. Um, and, you know, I also write a design 
blog. And so that's where I go to really uh, see where all the trends are going. Um, and I build authority that way. And then also continuing education. There are a lot of learning opportunities with all the different uh, design panels um, that are scheduled throughout market. Okay. Um, so what... What you're saying there is that, you know, it's it's this combination, because if you say even just for your own knowledge, but if you are a member of one of the organizations, ASID or IDS, their CEU opportunity and things like that, and it, that you can kind of kill two birds with one stone. Is that one of the things that you're talking about? Absolutely. OK. It's, um, and and you're exactly right. It's, it's killing more than two two mm. birds, I think. Right. Um, and I also love that you said that you can see the trends because here you are, you're taking the information back to your own blog. And as you said in your own words, it's, it's establishing your authority with your readers because it's, it's like, sort of like fashion show week, right? What we're seeing in the fall New York City fashion week is what's gonna, what we're going to see in the stores that following spring. And so High Point Market and all of the introductions are doing the same thing. Yeah, I would say it's probably about six months um, ahead of when you're going to see it in the market. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, I always like going, uh, you know, and and product may not be available right away for a project that I may be working on. Um, but I snap lots of pictures. And as long as I have that on me, uh, when that project comes up, I can see, you know, go back and refer back to my camera roll. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. so, yeah, it's it's a wealth of information. <laughs> okay, cool. And Lisa, how about you? What are you, what do you feel are the reasons why that you continue to invest in visiting High Point every year? Well, I think as a designer, you have to go. Um, it's imperative because you can see scale of product and you know we're an online world but scale you can't see on the computer and so when you go to market you can sit in the chair you can tell if the chair is comfortable you can decide if you have a tall client which product lines best suit that person um, you can see uh, fabrics which Again, online, you can see fabrics, but seeing them in person is an entirely different ballgame. And I also feel that getting the connection with the company owners and your sales reps is huge. I mean, that is so important. When I go to market and I go in inner hall or I go in a showroom and I see the worlds of gorgeous fabrics and new, new introductions is such eye candy. I get so excited. <laughs> and you know, a lot of times you go to market and you're exhausted, but you get there and you get so energized and maybe that needle in the haystack that you haven't been able to find online or at local showrooms, you can find when you're at high point market. So mm -hmm. I, I just feel like it's really important to go. And I'm near Charlotte, so it's really easy for me to drive an hour and 45 minutes to High Point. And I used to drive back and forth every day, and then I figured out that most of the networking events happened at night. So it was really important for me to stay and be involved in those. So now I stay every market, and I have for the last probably five years. And I think it's very, very proper that you call them the networking opportunities at the end of the day. <laughs> I mean, I've been there now, ladies. Come on. <laughs> oh, they are. I mean, you know, honestly, yeah, this is Jeannie here. But I think that half of the business is conducted mm -hmm. after market is over. Yeah. I agree. Well, we do go to the cocktail parties, but typically I schedule dinners every night of market with brands or um, other designers. And so even though we might show our face at the cocktail party, typically that's an hour, no more. And then we have a dinner and the dinner is where we have the opportunity to have conversations away from market outside of our business and we can really connect with the brands or other designers. And I feel like those opportunities are very important to my work. I love that. I love that, that you intentionally 
plan those ahead of time, Lisa, because that is valuable. And it's, look, I can hear you. You're probably often invited by some of the uh, brands to be at a dinner that they're hosting for the who's who of the design industry. I'm sure that 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 is happening to you at this level in so many years in business. But even the designers that are my baby designers out there that might be in in business only one or two or three years, the the, the lesson, the tip in there is you've, you've taken the time and maybe you do know somebody on Facebook that you are designer besties with. Don't just leave it to chance and, you know, will you run into each other and will you be able to really have a conversation at a cocktail party. There's a good reason to go to the cocktail parties. The the brands hold them so that you come and see their showroom and their products and their goods and you meet a lot of people. But I love this little tip of going out of your way to pick five or six people that you respect as business people and as designers and have that opportunity to, for that layer of conversation that is deeper than just the fun at the at the party. Good point. Totally. Yeah. Good point. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love it. And so I also like your point, Lisa, about seeing the product that you are then going to place in your projects, at being able to understand the scale and being able to understand the quality and whether it's suitable for a larger person or a shorter person and having that confidence to be able to look at a, a client who's five foot or six foot and say, I know that this is a good fit for you because you're right. The whole world is moving to online. So many of the brands are moving their product to online. Line, but you do need to be able to have confidence in what you're specifying to your clients, right? Right. And, you know, not everybody has Jeannie's fabulous showroom. <laughs> if, if you're in Pasadena, then you go to Jeannie's showroom okay. but, or in that area. But, um, you know, it's not always that way where everybody is. And so to go in the showroom and to be able to learn from the company what sets that product apart makes me a better salesperson for my client. And let's face it, we are selling. We are selling to our clients. So it better prepares me and it gives me all the information and everything to make me look like I really know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And and let's talk a bit, uh, just a few moments, about the fact that it is an investment, okay? So you're probably going to spend a couple of hundred dollars a night at a hotel. You may have to take a plane, train, or automobile, or a car to get there. And you're going to take two to three or four days out of your business, depending on the desire, the the amount of, the the length that you desire to stay, right? So it's not... Uh, you know, it's not lost on on me or any of us that you know this is a, could be a couple thousand dollars to do this. And yeah. of course, yeah. I am aw- very aware of the way I see in the Facebook groups designers that will say, "Hey, I'm going. I got a room. Does anybody want to share a room?" So there are a lot of people that will share a room and cut expenses. There are a lot of people that will rent uh, Verbos or Airbnbs and share expenses that way. But you, it is something that as a, an, an interior designer, I think that you're going to sit there at the beginning of your calendar year and it's going to be something that you budget in as your marketing or business development expense, one, whatever category you want to put it into, right? But you don't just like, oh, because it's a couple thousand dollars by the time you do it all, right? I'd say at yeah. least a couple thousand dollars. I'm coming from California. Sure. And um, yes, it's a significant amount of time um, to get there. It's, you know, almost two days traveling alone. Mm-hmm. Right, right. So. <laughs> right, right. And the thing is that, um, you know, we all should always have availability in our budget for things like this. And so we're going to go further on as to why High Point Market should be the place that you direct the monies this year. So, okay. So now, as we've talked about some of the reasons why the both of you invest in coming to it, can we, can you think of specific stories or incidences where you maybe saw a particular piece and you had the immediate opportunity to sell it or some other way that it might have impacted your business that you can recall in a direct and tangible way. Uh, This is Jeannie, and it has definitely impacted my business. I have not been in the business as long as Lisa has. It's only been about five and a half years for me, and High Point was the first market that I went to. I just jumped on a a plane, um, showed up. And, um, you know, the rest is history. But um, 
yeah, I mean, just like Lisa said, that uh, being able to see everything in person, um, I can comf comfortably and confidently speak to the quality of everything I, I source. Um, so, you know, after I the first year after I started going to High Point, I became a style spotter. And from that, and um, yeah, I was a, an official style spotter for High Point Market, I think that was in 2014. And I was posting all my finds on Instagram and in the blog, and people started asking me, you know, how to purchase that product. And, you know, that got me thinking, you know, back then I was just a designer, and I thought, well, gosh, why don't I open up a store? So I opened up a store, and then, uh, you know, that was three years ago. And, and after that, um, you know, it's morphed into, it's really become a to the trade showroom hmm. um, because designers are the ones who really appreciate all those unique finds. So it's turned into, you know, not just one revenue stream, but several. Wow. And, and because of that, uh, and that's all because of High Point Market. I okay. can't say that I would be here without um, having, you know, having high point market behind me. Okay. So the thing is, we've got a couple things happening here. Number one, I had no idea that you were really only in business that short a period of time <laughs> because you really are very successful, very well known, and I'm just with floored. Okay. Um, secondly, so what you do is, it, it seems to me you have two benefits. You're, you're new in the industry and you're just like, that's it. I'm going. I'm going to see what, you know, this is all about. And not only do you go and to both of your points, learn about the quality and the selection and everything else, but it sparks another business idea for for you that you come back and you decide to open up a showroom and so that's interesting that 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 seed was planted from your visit to high point i was gonna say i was the style spotter for three times this is lisa and um and that helped me um make connections at market with brands and pr people and it was it was interesting the different things that it brought to me but the other thing i was going to say about market why i think it's important is because um it keeps me abreast on what is the current trends and when we're talking about trends it goes so much deeper than just seeing the colors and seeing um, the patterns or whatever. Mm -hmm. The trends and how people buy and how they shop mm -hmm. and, you know, what we do with that. We learn a lot about the trends through the educational lectures. And so once I go hear a lecture, if I like what the person's talking about and I want to find more about, find out more about it, a lot of times when I come home from market, I contact them and I ask them if I can have the um, the dialogue from their talk. Um, if I have other questions, it gives me an opportunity to contact them. So after I hear one of the lectures, I will go up to the speaker and ask them for a card because it gives me that opportunity to have that connection later. And those types of situations have highly impacted my business because when I get home from market, if I have a question about something, I can remember that I heard a talk about it at market and I can go back to uh, that reference and contact that person. So it might be a lecture. It may be another designer. It could be a conversation I had in the hallway or in a showroom. But um, making those connections are huge. It. I yeah. love that. That's amazingly so that again, you know, it's so funny because it's along your same lines of going out of your way to arrange dinner with the key people that you'd love to be able to interact and, and exchange ideas with to take that step of going up to a speaker, getting a business card, following up after the engagement and asking them for a, a clarifying question or for their notes or anything like that. That's crazy. If you ever came up and asked me for my notes, I'd have to send you the airplane napkins, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm teasing and that's awesome. That's so good. Um, so but, do we want to talk about Ashley, the style spotter at this point, And maybe you tell us a little bit about how that works. I have other questions 
questions that I definitely want to come back to about the experience of being at High Point, but it seems appropriate. So this yes. spring style, style spotters for 2019 April are set already. Am I correct? I feel like I've seen the, um, the social media posts already. I'm glad you've seen them, and yes, you are correct. <laughs> okay, we so, choose our we choose our style spotters based on a calendar year. So actually, the team that's in place for April will also be the same team that's searching the, for the trends in October. Oh. Um, and what we do is actually here's a little tidbit for your for your listeners. And in the beginning of May, on our website, we'll open up the submission form for 2020, and we'll keep that open until early July. And then the selection committee is going to meet and make that decision on the new team because we'll be able to announce the 2020 team at fall market in October at the Style Spotters Live Breakfast that Tuesday morning. Oh, you know, I I saw that this year. I saw that breakfast and walked by when they were all getting their picture taken, yeah. as a matter of fact, now that you say that. <laughs> it's okay. so fun to do that announcement live. There's just yes. there's people are cheering and everybody's so excited. It really brings up the energy. But um, we love the program. It's been going strong since 2011. I love, of course, Lisa and Jeannie have been a part of it. Um, and they hit on something that's a really good point. We're all looking for... Um, for people who can, who have the ability to spot those trends, but also it's very diverse is what we're trying to find in the team. And so it's also some of the well-established designers, but blending that team with, with some of the newcomers who have that keen eye and looking at different aesthetics and trying to pull from around the country and also bringing international designers. We're trying to pull all that together in a team of eight. Okay. Okay. And so, so here's what we're looking at. And we're thinking about criteria. You're looking for a seasoned as well as baby designers. You're looking for U.S. as well as international designers. You're looking for designers uh, from all over that have different aesthetics. So it's not just, you know, straight lace up and down this one look. It's all different types of looks and aesthetics. And then are the other criteria uh, in play as far as your Instagram following, the, your blog re readership or any of that, or is that not really the play anymore? Or is it? I mean, I could no. see if it were, but. Right. We definitely look at that. Of course, we're looking at the reach of your voice. So um, if you choose to not have the, the standard social media channels, if you don't have a Facebook and a Twitter and an Instagram, then that's less opportunity for you to get your style spotter voice out there. So that would certainly come into play. But um, and of course, it's hard not to look at the followers and we take that into account. But we're also looking at the quality of the posts as well. So I mean, anybody that's interested, I certainly encourage you to apply. There's no reason not to be considered. Okay. But like from a completely practical standpoint, there are probably hundreds of designers interested. You're going to select eight and all things being equal. If somebody has sort of a growing, and I would say this too, and you tell me if you're right, because when you just said quality of post, we could have one designer that might have 5,000 followers, but three or four likes or 20 likes for every picture and hardly any conversation. But at the same time, you could have a designer that might have 800 followers with 40 or 50 likes for every post and tons of conversation. So it's the, it's like everything else. It's the engagement is, am I right? Or, or am I like, no, stop saying that. Luann. Well, I mean, that's just, <laughs> that's getting really down to nitty gritty. And that's also looking at one specific <laughs> channel. It's broader than that because we're trying to balance all the different aspects that we want to see combined into this team. So okay. sure we're looking at that, but we're also balancing that with the other items we're looking at. Okay, so, you know, I don't get accused of just drilling down too specific too often, so don't worry about that. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. So, and, and this is, Jeannie, I have one thing to add. Sure. Um, you know, it's, it's a, a, you know, you go to High Point, you're a style spotter, um, you know, and it's fun, but you know what? It is work. Right. Um, it is a lot of work. People think it's it's really easy to pick out 20 to, 20 to 5 pieces um, and, and post about it on social media, but then there is a lot more that goes into that. Um, you know, putting on, on your Pinterest boards and, and um, you know, getting it ready for uh, the style spotter breakfast. And then after the fact, as well because you're assisting in writing the trend report that goes out to all the buyers um, a month or so after market mm -hmm. is over so um, so it is work so um, those who apply need to be prepared for that so that is an awesome 
thing to bring up, Jeannie. Thank you. So here, here are the responsibilities. You just said that we're going to have to write, we're going to have to select 20 to 25 pieces. And you can't phone it in, and nobody wants to phone it in. But, like, seriously, I'm sure after a couple of days you're probably exhausted. You're like, that's good enough. And But it can't, you can't do that, right? <laughs> that's number one. Then you have got to – how so you have to put them to Pinterest boards. Is there um, a certain number, Ashley, of – social media posts or blog posts that are required to accompany this whole experience as well? So and the commitment across the board is um, we're looking for you to be our trend voice. So not only does that happen on a whole calendar year, but looking at each market cycle, we're going to come to you leading up to each market. There's going to be some items you can put out. Uh, actually, when this interview airs the week before on our social media, all of our style spotters will have dropped some content about new product coming up at market and something that they're excited to see. We're also going to look to them to help us write an article identifying some new products that they're excited to see at market and some trends that they are predicting we might see. Um, As we have media reaching out through us throughout the year, we're going to be sending them your ways. They're going to be looking for quotes and interviews and such. At market itself, it's at least a five-day commitment. We're asking to come in on Friday. You got to stay all the way through the Tuesday morning Style Spotters Live Breakfast. You're going to be doing a trend tour around the market. So you still are able. There's time in there uh, in those five days, of course, to do your regular business. We know that they're all working designers or buyers that are part of this team, and you need to be at market to do that. We get that. But there, Eugenie's right. There is definitely some work. And then afterwards, you've got about two weeks to write your trend write ups that will uh, drop in the trend report afterwards. Wow. Yeah, so that's not to be underestimated. (laughs) Exactly. Can I add something to that? Sure. The other thing that you have to think about is the reason that they choose the different people to be style spotters that they do is, like Ashley said, um, they look for diversity in your design work. And so when you're curating your, your market boards, you're thinking about your brand and what speaks to your brand. So you're not just going around market and saying, Oh, I like that table. I mean, you're really curating for a specific look and your style. And so when you load those, those boards on Pinterest, there's a lot to know about it. Like I didn't realize that you really need vertical shots and not horizontal because Mm. Pinterest is vertical. Mm -hmm. Pinterest is vertical. So when you put the vertical photos on the board, it shows up so much larger. And and then if it's curated properly, it's a very strong look and it speaks to every asset of your brand. So there's a lot that goes into it. It's not... It's not just your walk around market choosing one little table or whatever. It's you really have to think about what you're doing. So that's because- awesome advice, Lisa, because basically what you're saying is that it isn't just go pick things that are objectively beautiful, but don't reflect your brand and your style, because right. ultimately all of your selections together should look like a cohesive story, more or less, that reflects you and your aesthetic. Is that exactly. what you're saying? Exactly. Amazing. Okay, yep. so that is a lot, you know, and so this is not for the meek of heart. This is a huge commitment. <laughs> right, right. Okay, and Jeannie, I'm even more impressed that you did it the first year, what the second year you were in business. That's amazing to even have the chops to do it, right? <laughs> but the thing about it is, is I can also hear the opportunities that it opens. First of all, you're creating a, a relationship with Ashley and the High Point Market Authority. That's not to be underestimated. Then you're creating relationships with the brands and you're creating relationships with the other style spotters um this is it is um, like anything worth doing it will have a nice i'm sure a payoff or an roi but uh, like anything that has a great payoff or roi is not something you just like jump into and say i got this so Uh awesome i love it i love it (laughs) and so the reality is is that we are in february of 2019 and so what we're saying is if this peaks you and you think you You've got the chops to do this in May of 2019 through July. The application process will be open. And then if you're selected, you will then be the style spotters for 
April and October of 2020, Ashley, am I correct on that? Or you will start the following October 2020 and do, tell me about that. No, you're correct. We'll announce it. We'll announce it October 2019. You, um, your reign starts in January 2020 (laughs) and then it's going to go all the way through December. (laughs) Okay. I love it. I love it. Okay. Right. That was what was throwing me off the announcement in October, but you're just announcing somebody else. The other eight are responsible for it. You're getting announced and welcomed into the crew. Okay. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay. Now, Tell me about, I don't mean this in a, you know, hey, us and not them way, but tell me legitimately, either of you, um, some of the things that in a positive way just might be more available or different experience than going to some of these other, we have other great markets. We have Las Vegas market. We have Dallas market. We have Atlanta's America's Mart. So I know that these are also worthwhile places to visit, but what's the nudge? What's the rub? Is there something different for a designer when they consider making the trip to High Point? Well, this is Lisa, Luann. I'm going to answer um, that High Point is the the hub. It is where, I mean, for years, the furniture was made in North Carolina. So um, it, that's not the case anymore. But the showrooms in High Point are larger than they are, say, in Vegas. And not to disparage the Vegas market because it has its place. Um, for people who are on the West Coast, it's easier for them to get to Vegas, I know. But High Point it's the bigger show and the showrooms are larger and it's a place where I can go and meet with my sales reps that I can't do if I'm going to Paris or Milan or London. And I've been to all those markets and I love going international markets, but I still maintain high point market is the market for my business in the U S and for me to connect in person with the companies I buy from, the sales reps I buy from right here in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. it's what I get. Right, 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 right. And I would say that that is another really awesome thing to highlight. And one of you, I think it was you, Lisa, that said it earlier in the conversation, is that connection with the salespeople that you are your reps and or the showroom owners, whatever that connection is to establish it. Because we all know that we always get a little bit better service when there is a face to the name. Um, And the relationship is strengthened at that one little bit better. And do both of you recommend, I have been told by others, uh, curious your opinions, that for if you have two or three brands that you are using on a regular basis, if you have not met them in person, to not leave it to chance, to call them now in February and say, I'm planning to be there this spring. Can I get on your calendar? Do you agree that it's important to do that ahead of time? Okay. Okay. Absolutely. And, you know, when you could go in the showroom and sit down and talk to the owner face to face, Mm -hmm. there's so much value in that. And Mm -hmm. another thing that happens at High Point that I've never had happen in any other market, I was asked to be on a panel for Bob Marisich's breakfast. And it was a a talk. uh, The panel was designers, full of designers, but it was for the showroom owners. Uh And so we... We had the opportunity to talk to showroom owners about the tier pricing of to the trade versus stocking dealer. Mm. And it was really interesting to have that conversation. And it was so nice to hear from the showrooms who had an opportunity to say something, but also for the designers to then talk to the showrooms about considering if if you're a designer who is buying more than a store then why could you not have stocking dealer versus Mm. to the trade and so those conversations don't happen at other markets and so that those are huge conversations right that you can have you know 
And yes, I mean, that I can't even imagine that. My brain just went, I want to lead that panel. <laughs> like, <Yeah>. Whoa. <laughs> that sounds like a meaty panel. <laughs> you know, all the furniture owners standing there and really hearing the pros and cons and what it's like from the designers and to do business with them, right? And, and the learning there on both sides. And because a lot of times, no matter what it is that we do, I don't care what our, our own individual career job role is. It's sometimes we don't even consider the other person's challenges. So like in window works, for example, our, our Monday morning meetings every week, we meet with salespeople, installers, and admins. And it's amazing the the growth that happens when an installer looks at a, a installation sheet and he's upset that three quarters or one half or one piece of information has been left off by a salesperson. But then when he has the conversation with the salesperson and and gets the backstory on there was the plumber was there and the electrician was there and the designer was there yeah. and oh my god then he's like yeah okay i guess i get i could see leaving off that piece of information too so that just my brain just went wow how valuable for the designers to hear the conversation from the standpoint of the furniture owners and manufacturers and vice versa so love it love it love it i have a question for you in there though Okay. So we, we talked about how important it is to set up these appointments ahead of time. So what if I'm out there listening right now to you very experienced interior designers and they, somebody is in business one or two years and thinks, well, I've only ever placed two orders or I'm in business five years and I've only placed four orders from this company. Is it worthwhile to set up the appointment? And is the sales rep going to be like, you know, I'm sorry, sweetie, like I've got big people to see. <laughs> so what is your opinion on that? Do you, do you suggest that um, a designer that maybe doesn't have, but is that the way to sort of establish and, and, you know, just say, look, I am new, but I intend to be mighty and I want to meet you. <laughs> Well, I think anytime you are doing business with someone, you need to know the person you're doing business with. And so it's valuable to make the appointment. Um, certain showrooms may give you the brush off, but most of them don't. Most showrooms are very open and want you to make an appointment because they like to work by appointment. There's certain showrooms that you can't get in unless you make an appointment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so... You need to do your homework before market, and if there's showrooms you want to go see, um, for example, the Baker showroom, you need an appointment to get in there. Um, they're so busy that they work by appointment. Now, will they let you in if you don't have one? Um, if you know your sales rep, typically the showrooms try to accommodate that, but you have to realize that they're very busy and it's more uh, valuable to you if you have a sales rep who's walking you around and walking you through a showroom that is as big as, say, a Baker showroom or a Bernhardt or something mm -hmm. like that. So those larger showrooms want you to make an appointment. So do okay. your homework ahead and find out which showrooms require appointments and and do make the appointments and go through your sales rep wherever possible that's your person in the door you know yes. that's the one who's invested in help, helping you and helping you know more about the line and to exactly. that point okay and to that point when you say do your homework ladies tell us some of the things that in in that we should think about in pre-planning for this trip so i have to say i know that there are are I, I think, Jeannie, do you do a tour, right? I mean, I know that there's Jackie Von Tobel does a tour. I don't know if Deb Barrett does or still did. I know she did. I don't know if she does. But tell us a little bit about the opportunity for a designer to be part of one of the tours. And then what are what is each of your advice if they're not interested in doing a tour or they cannot get into a tour? Well, for the first timer, I think it's a really good idea to do a tour um, because you're seeing it from from um, a season, the perspective of a seasoned, um, you know, designer who navigates market and knows, you know, the ins and outs of market. Uh, because, you know, coming to High Point, jumping off a of plane, it's really daunting, um, especially those designers who travel alone, at least. I know that there are a lot of designers who are afraid of traveling alone, but this is also a good opportunity for them to network with um, 
with other uh, newbie designers to market. Mm -hmm. And I often see that those designers just become really close friends and they go through market together. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, uh, they they are each other's crutch through market. (laughs) Right, right, right. It's, It's good to have a posse. I I just love to have a posse. I just, I love, I love personally, I've had, and each market I've been to, I've only been to two um, in the last, you know, the last one was 1986, but that doesn't count for the last year. And I am, I love it when somebody comes up to me and says, you know, hey, where are you going now? Come with me, come anywhere I'm going. I'm not doing the business part. I'm not doing the whole, that, that's why I say to them, look, hang with me if you want, if you want to walk around, you want company, you want to, you know, meet and greet people and stuff. But I always say they have to get with a, a seasoned designer to go through market. Otherwise, you could stand there at the like get off the bus and just look and go. I have no idea where to start. Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah. And and High Point Market is eleven point five million square feet. <laughs> it's so it's like getting dropped off at the front door of Disney and going have fun. <laughs> like, what do you do? Do you you, you would miss Epcot? Did, you wouldn't even know. You have to take another bus to get to Epcot, right? Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. In the beginning, I had to plan everything out. You know, I went through um, the entire website and looked at, I mean, the High Point Market website and clicked on every link to each exhibitor to plan out which showrooms were best for my business. Mm. And I plotted them out by building on each shuttle stop. But, you know, you do that after a while. And then now I don't need to do that. I know where I need to go. Um, and so why not just, um, join, um, you know, join with the designer, um, go on a designer's tour and then cut to the chase and get to the good stuff. Right. Um, I know <laughs> that, right. Um, yeah. why your time walking through all these buildings, you know, um, and I know that my tour, um, I'm doing the insiders tour. There are plenty of tours out there. Um, and I gear my tour to, um, designers seeking customization and one of a kind. And the reason I do that is because I see so much going online and I just think to maintain the integrity of an interior designer and the value that a designer brings to the table um, and so they don't have to compete with what's online um, offer custom offer mm-hmm. custom and unique one of a kind and your clients can't shop you so ash tell i mean the, actually i'm going to ask you about the website and tour um in a minute but but Jeannie, tell me about this insider's tour. So you, I love that you just said, so are, is, is first of all, is insider's tour something that is sponsored by High Point Market that you do for them? Is it something, it's an offshoot of your own business, that it's a pay to play for people who want to be in it with you? How does it work? No, this is sponsored by High Point Market, and um, and I it's I do not pay to play with with the showrooms because I wanted for me at least to to maintain my authenticity. Okay, um, I really meant do the designers have to pay to play? Oh no, no, the designers do not have to pay to play. Okay, no, okay, it's free for the designers. Um, it's a one day tour. And, um, and I think one day is perfect because, you know, they get a taste of the market and I do it kind of like a speed dating thing where we go through each, each market for me. I mean, each showroom for, uh, maybe, you know, I've had to kind of tweak it a little in the beginning. It was like, you know, each, uh, visit was about 45 minutes. And then I found that those designers who were not interested in that uh, particular showroom kind of lost interest. So Mm. I do it really quickly just to get, give them a taste of each showroom so that they can come back later. They go back on the one they want to. Right. Um, And so, so I love that your tour is geared towards customization and one of a kind. So Ashley, are there other design leaders like Jeannie running these insider tours that you've got it all set up and people can sort of pick which one they want to get attached to? We do. There's actually, it's really growing. The tours are becoming very popular and it's because of the value that um, Jeannie and Lisa were just talking about. It's 
it's a great way to get an insider's view, if you will, of of market and how they work it and what showrooms they're going to. Uh, for the insider's tour program specifically, it's actually for new buyers. So in order to qualify to even be on one of those tours, you have to be um, have, have not come to market at all within the last two years. Or even if you've come once in the last two years, we still qualify you there, qualify you there as a new buyer just because we know it's still a lot to take in, even if you've been here once. Uh, but we have other tours, um, our Style Spotters Trend Tours. We've traditionally been doing those on Tuesday morning of market after the Style Spotters Live Breakfast. And this market for April, we're actually going to be expanding that. And I'm really excited about that. What we're going to do is we're still going to have some of those favorites tours on Tuesday morning. It's going to be four of those. It's four of our Style Spotters picking their favorite showrooms, taking you on an hour-long tour that encompasses two of those showrooms. Rooms. But before Tuesday morning, we actually have um, six tours that will be two hour long tours and they're going to be product category focused. And this is open up to all buyers at market. You don't have to be a new buyer. It's if you know that you want to learn, find more resources for a particular product category. Like one of our style spotters is doing designer friendly upholstery and another one is doing antiques and antique reproductions. There's six categories out there that you can sign up and be a part of these tours. And you're going to get a two hour long tour. They're going to go to four different showrooms within that two hour span. They're going to tag on an optional lunch at the end. Of course, all this is free to any buyer that wants to come. But um, but then they're also going to create a, a sheet that they're going to give you there with other resources they, that they suggest in that product category. So we just opened that up on our website. The tours actually require an RSVP because we want to make sure that we're keeping the, the tour size at a manageable level so everybody can get the other questions answered and the tour group can move through the buildings in, in a um, reasonable fashion. But we're also seeing some of the buildings doing tours. We have um, the Sweet Spot Tour. That's something that IMC does in, in the suites at Market Square. So it's a great time to go with an with a influencer or a well-known designer going through there and they're going to show some of their highlights we've seen them a few in the hamilton wren design district they're starting to do tours there uh it's really becoming quite popular so just check our website if you're looking under the um the plan your trip section you'll see it there and we also have it highlighted on the events portion of our website as well so this is awesome. I mean, this is uh, this this is the kind of thing you need to know about. You can't just hop yeah. off the plane, right? You have to know about these yep. things, right? Okay, I mean, I love it. So they everybody can find this on the High Point Market Authority website, and there's a section yes. for all these different types of tours: the ones for the newbies, the ones for the more you know, for anybody, the product category tours, the style spotter stores tours, all of it. Yeah, highpointmarket.org. So, highpointmarket.org. Okay, awesome. So so now, ladies, uh, Lisa and Jeannie, tell me any, okay, so let's say I don't get into a tour. Let's say I'm not interested in a tour. Let's say I've been there two or three or four times, and maybe I think I've got this. Are there any tips that you would say, look, maybe you think you've got it all figured out, but this is one planning tip, the planning tip of make, making sure that we reach out to whatever reps that we want to meet in person. Um, I know that, Jeannie, you mentioned how you used to go through the whole website and make your plan, and you would ahead of time say, not just know the names of the brands that you wanted to visit, but you knew their locations and you knew their shuttle stops so that you weren't like walking in circles when you were there. Can either of you think of any other really nitty-gritty type tips that we we should be thinking about I know I'm no both of you're going to say wear flat shoes so <laughs> no, no. this is Jeannie and yeah. um you know High Point Market puts out the um furniture there is a furniture preview accessory preview and a designer preview those guides um that's a good way to really see what new product was um is coming out or um has come out the season before um, a good way is, I don't, do you guys, um, High Point Market used to do a Twitter chat. Is there a Twitter chat this, um, this market, Ashley? So we're, we're actually expanding beyond the Twitter chat. We won't have that specifically. Um, and that actually will have already kicked off by the time this airs, but it'll okay. be the style spotters dropping on all of our social channels throughout an entire week. We called it inspiration week. It happened last week. And, um, so anybody that's listening that didn't see that go back and check our Facebook and our YouTube 
YouTube and our Twitter and our Instagram. There's a ton of content that drops yeah. next week. And what I'm really excited about is that this following week coming up, starting on Monday, March 4th, we're going <laughs> to turn that around and we're going to invite everybody to be part of that buzz. And so we want you to look at the new product picks portion of our website that we just put up all the product that the exhibitors have said this is new coming to market this podcast series that Luann is doing is going to be talking about some of those as well and then plus with the style spotters dropped and then what you're seeing in all the trade publications put it out on your channel and say what you're excited to be a part what you're excited to see at spring market and make sure you tag us to, um, and use the hashtags hpmkt and HPMKT inspired, we're going to be watching those hashtags and then we want to reshare because we want to create this whole conversation leading up to market. So at anybody watching our social channels, they're going to have a really good idea at what's new and what's coming to market before they even get there. We know that that will certainly help people's planning if they have those ideas. You are so good at what you do, Ashley. Can I just tell <laughs> yes, you that? She is. I know. <laughs> She's great at it. Trying you to get really the news out are. there. You really are. And I just love your passion for it, too. I really <laughs> do. I mean, you know, the rest of us have a business, right? It's our business. But this is, you know, this is your career, you know, but you don't own High Point Market. You don't own the showrooms, <laughs> right? You're just oh. so into it. And I just love it. I think it's awesome. You know, so, Luann, the way I'm looking at it is I know that there's all of those buyers that are coming to market. You you hear this. You're saying, okay, I know I need to be at market, but you also know that you have all these projects. You have life happening in general, and we need to make it easy for everybody that's planning to be there. I mean, you need to remember, we try to put a little checklist out, and I know it's easy to remember, okay, I know I need my hotel, and I know I need my flight, but, oh, I forgot to register. So we're going to try to get those those notices out there to remind you to do that so that it comes in the mail and you don't have to stand in line when you get here and just any resource that we can get out there, any news that helps you before you get on the ground. So when you're here, you're not feeling overwhelmed. Mm. Uh, that's our goal. Uh, yeah. but I will say, I mean, we have an incredible market advisor team. If you ever need to call, you just call our line. We've got a team of about six people leading up to every market who will sit on the call on the phone with you, answer every question that you have for your trip planning, give you every resource that you may need, but we also try to make them available during market because I've realized there's two types of people in this world. One, <laughs> the people that are going to plan, like me, when I did Disney World, I did it down to every single minute. And then there's the people that doesn't like matter. Like they get off yep. the bus. <laughs> exactly. They're, they're, they're nothing that we tell them, they're not going to plan in advance. So we've created on-site resources to help them with that. We have, of course, info booths everywhere we have a market resource guide we have a pocket guide the website traffic is is uh, through the roof during market because people are using our mobile site and the and the high point market app that's all there but we also have a pop-up that we started in 2018 it's right next to the main transportation terminal and it's called the point and it's yeah. literally, we close off two lanes of the street and in about 48 hours, we build this semi-permanent structure and we have tons of programming in there. One of the elements we have is our market advisor team. They're going to be down there. So any new buyer that walks up and they get their pass because they forgot to register before they got to market and then they're like, well, I didn't plan anything. What do I do now? <laughs> they can come sit down for 30 minutes with that market advisor. We're going to show you the map. We're going to help you look at your product categories and try to get you where you want to go. We also have round tables in there. So if you want to have uh, kind of an intimate setting for an interactive conversation with well-known moderators on a set topic that, um, that affects this industry, we're having those at 10 and 2 every day. We also have mixers in the evenings and uh, Parsons table pop up. They do lunch with homemade um, soups and salads and sandwiches and such. Uh, we're trying to be a resource for everybody that needs it. It's amazing. You really do it, have all the yeah. bells and whistles. It's well thought awesome. Out. Yeah, it yeah. is something else. Yeah. One other thing, the two other things I want to bring up and have you mention and talk to us about, Ashley, are the Designer Viewpoint Series and the mm -hmm. Keynote Series. Yes. Yeah, we're really excited about those programs. We do both of those in the High Point Theater, which is located right in the main transportation terminal. And we just announced the Design Viewpoint Series. We do this with our partner, ASID, on those. Those are all CEU accredited series. They're going to be 60 minutes each. They happen at noon at each day of market, well, the Saturday and the Sunday and the Monday.
This is awesome. I mean, you ladies are something else I just value so much that you took the time to share. I mean, Lisa and Jeannie, particularly as interior designers, you are women that are known for giving back and for mentoring and for helping the designer next to you and the one coming up behind you to do their best and to really build their business in an intentional way. And of course, knowing the product and the accessories and everything that you source and that you specify for your projects is is a very big component of running a successful business. I mean, you know, we say that the business part is 80% and the design part is 20%, but we do know that if you don't do the 20% well and you don't find the right things, to your point, Lisa, that reflect your brand and your aesthetic and create a story that attracts a client to you, it's, it's hard to be successful. And so this is a great place to kind of grasp that for yourself as a designer, right? You could see so many things in such a short period of time that you can kind of just collate in your own mind or curate is really the word that you use and is the better word of what is your feel and your look so that you can go out and, and stand in it and, and, and express it to your consumers, right? Right. That's yeah. absolutely true. I love and, it. And there's a couple other things I wanted to throw out that I think are important as far as getting ready for market. Mm. Um, one thing that I would suggest is have market cards made. Don't forget your market cards and don't do the cards that you give to clients because your mm. client cards, you're putting a lot of money in those beautiful cards. Get market cards that aren't expensive. On the market card, put your name, your address, and your email, not your phone number. <laughs> because when you get home from market and you've given 5,500 sales reps your card, mm. your phone will ring off the hook if you put your <laughs> phone number on it. Oh, so that's why I'm getting all those calls. <laughs> that's pretty smart. That is pretty smart. It's like the little other card. Okay. So, and if you want to, you can create a market email so that you keep oh, everything so there. <laughs> Gosh, and I learned something new from you every day, Lisa. <laughs> that is pretty clever. I have to say that is pretty clever and valuable because you know what? Look, so maybe you're going to get 50 emails and you're interested in 30 of them, but you want exactly. those 30 where you want That's those 30 right. and then mixed in with your other good billion that come in from everything else. Oh, you're going to lose right. them. <sighs> So I have two other tips, and then that's it. Oh, this the is other bold. tip is download the app Cam Card, C A M C A R D. When you walk in a showroom and the rep gives you his card, you can snap a photo of it, and it saves all the information in Cam Card. Mm-hmm. Now, it might not tell you that you were in the showroom that had the beautiful blue armoire you like, so. You can always hold the card up and snap a photo in front of the armoire, and then you have that. So once I get home, all the pictures I take at market, I make an album from that market on my iPhone. Then I upload it to Dropbox Mm. so that I can always access all of that from that particular market. And... um, that really helps me. And you can take the picture of the card and hand it back to the rep so you're recycling. Nice. <laughs> I love it that. Doesn't, it doesn't get lost at the bottom of your bag. Sure. And you're not carrying a heavy bag with all these cards. And, you know, when I get back to the hotel at night, if they've given me literature, I go through it. I decide what's important that I need to keep. And the things that I don't feel like I need to keep the brochure for, I take pictures of it so that it, I have it digitally saved. And then it goes in Dropbox, but I'm not lugging a l- luggage with heavy um, brochures and things that you really don't need anymore. Wow. This is, this is, these are, yeah. these are truly like, you know, uh, pro tips here. 
<laughs> I'm just going to say. <laughs> <laughs> and here's another. This is Jeannie. And um, I have another word of advice um, for newbies to market that they need to ask a lot of questions. Ask um, what the minimum opening order is. Mm. Uh, is there a freight cap? What's the lead time? Is there an annual minimum spend? Um, and how about IMAP pricing? Um, I think that's one thing that is really important these days to really yeah. know what IMAP pr- pricing is because if – um, I map pricing is below a certain amount, then there's no way, you know, if it's close to what the designer pricing is, then there's no way to compete with what's online. So to me, I automatically throw that um, resource out the window. It's no point. What I, is that? I map internet manufacturer. What, what is that? It's internet minimum advertised price. price. Internet yeah. minimum. Okay. So yeah. you ask them what their IMAP pricing is. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. So walk yep. me through that for a moment. So so you're looking at a piece of furniture. It has $1,000 on it. Uh-huh. And so that, that $1,000 is what? The entry level price for the designer that has no buying power with that thing, but then there is an IMAP price associated with that price, that product as well? You know, each showroom prices, um, you know, they, they don't always advertise uh, their pricing on the floor. Uh, some of them will have all their tiered pricing levels um, on e- on a card on each piece of furniture. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can see what the difference is between this is retail, this is non-stocking dealer. Non-stocking mm-hmm. dealer, dealer is typically um, a designer or a retailer who doesn't make a commitment to putting product on the floor or who has a minim- minimum annual spend, um, who can't make that opening order. Right. Uh, and then there's a wholesale, um, that's stocking dealer. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then sometimes, uh, depending on what your volume is, there may be, uh, there may be even a lower pricing level than that. Um, Okay. So, yeah. And if you walk in a showroom and they tell you they're container only, just turn around. Yep. Mm-hmm. Walk back to the door. <laughs> yes, okay. Exactly. Tell us why. Yeah. Container but, only showrooms. Tell us why. Well, that's because they are selling only containers. And coming so, from overseas. So you have to unless, wait for like 9,000 other people to put an order in to get your one piece. Is that right? No. It's oh. like if you're buying the container, you get the pricing. And so you don't want to buy a container if you're a small designer. You're not, you've got to have a big store that you can sell a container of furniture or whatever. And Um, so you you might walk in a showroom and the prices are fabulous and you go, wow, this is awesome. And then you ask (laughs) how they sell and they say we're container only then you know you're not filling a container. You need to just go find a, someone who's going to sell you three of those or five of those. Or okay, so I took it the other way. It's The, uh, the point is that you have to, a container-only uh, vendor, you have to buy enough to fill a container. Yes. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I could see that might be a little hard. Who needs 5,000, you know, side tables? Okay, so, exactly. so tell me, just run me through, Jeannie. You said quickly up there, if I see X amount of price for that IMAP, then I know I'm leaving. Give me that little example, like well, in dollars. So tell me. They, they wouldn't put, um, they wouldn't uh, publish that IMAP pricing. Normally, my experience is that you have to ask the sales rep. Right, yeah. Um, so are you, do you sell the line online? Okay. So where do you sell through? Um, is there an IMAP policy in place? What okay. is that IMAP policy? Uh, because some are, you know, some are 10% below MSRP, some are 20, some are 30. Mm-hmm. Um, and if it's 30 and, uh, you know, that, that, that just doesn't make sense. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Because so the more... Competing. The higher that IMAP pricing is, the percentage is, the less m- pr- m- money you're making as a designer. Like, Completely. well, the more more hard it is, the harder it is to compete mm-hmm. with that number. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. there are no margins. Right, so. no margins. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Makes okay. it hard. The other thing I would suggest uh, in planning for market 
is to work by buildings because mm-hmm. High Point is tremendous. And so I schedule my market based on the days. Each day, I, maybe one day I'm going to work IHFC. And one day I'm going to work the design district. Another day I might work Market Square and C&D. And so I break it up based on what the building I'm in because you could spend so much of your time on the trolleys. Even, you know, we have the Go Anywhere shuttle, which is amazing. You have the red line, you have the trolleys, you have all these modes of operation, but the key is to work smart and work in like IHFC one day because it's a massive building. You've got the inner hall in the bottom, you've got, you know, all the floors. And so you could spend a day or two days in IHFC or more, depending on, you know, who you see there. And so try to map your market so that you're not running from IHFC in the morning to the design district in the afternoon and then back to Market Square because you're going to spend so much time in transportation trying to get to those buildings. If you map it day by day and work building by building, you don't waste time in between. I love it. Yeah. And and here's another tip. Um, look at the the weather forecasts because if it's, <laughs> no, I'm serious. If it's going to rain, um, if it's going to rain, plan plan those rain days in the buildings such as IHFC and the Sweet Set Market Square. So yeah. that the other days when it's not raining, you're running around outside. You okay. know, it sounds like a little thing, but it can be huge. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. If you if you don't think about it. These are really tremendous pro tips. I made a joke out before, but it's the absolute truth. These are the kinds of things that you do start to understand and recall and, and put into action after two, three, four, five, six, 10 times of doing it and finding out that you're being inefficient. And the reality of it is, is as we said at the top of the show, you're going to spend a few thousand dollars to do this. And depending on where you're coming from, it could be planes, trains, and automobiles to get to High Point. It's not like it's this big international, you know, hub like New York City where everything is flying into it, right? It's, uh, right. And, and that's another <laughs> thing too. We have... We should just say, in case we are enticing somebody from overseas or from far away to come, the airports that we can come into, there are two airports, right? It's Raleigh-Durham and Greensboro and what else? What are the Charlotte. Charlotte. Right. Yeah. And they're all like between, what, 45 and an hour, hour and a half away? Charlotte. An hour and a half for Charlotte, Charlotte and Raleigh-Durham. Yeah. And then probably, what, 20, 25 minutes for Greensboro? That's yeah. correct. Yeah. And yeah. we run free hotel shuttles from all three of them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's the other thing I just want to say. Um, The extent of the team that is there as the boots on the ground, as far as the people that you guys, I guess they're under your umbrella at High Point Market Authority, Ashley, Uh I'm not sure, or if it's under what, what, but I mean, every single door has somebody at it as you walk in that will tell you where to go. The Honestly, I mean, at the hotels, there's people that know what they're doing and tell you where to go. The shuttles, as you mentioned, back and forth, the red line. I have to tell you, I, I, I thought that it was amazing. I was standing one night, the first time I ever went, and I'm waiting and waiting and waiting for the shuttle to go back to the Marriott, and I have no idea where I was, but going back to the Marriott. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I asked which bus line I should be in, and I believed that I was standing in that bus line. And um, I, the last bus came, and I'm standing there, and where was it, and what happened? And, I'm, you know, I'm half on the phone, half off the phone, and finally, and I'm trying to do, my thing is, I, I was doing the patient thing. I was like, okay, so, you know, it's a free service, Lou, and they're not running any tw- every 10 seconds. Like, you know, you're, you're New York, New Jersey. Like, give it a minute. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, <laughs> so, like, it's now about 15 or 20 minutes, and I'm like, all right, I think this is a little crazy. So I go over and I ask somebody, and he said, oh, ma'am, you know, that, that bus left here, left out of here about 10 minutes ago. I'm like, no, oh, you no. see, I was standing here, you know, and I didn't pull Jersey on him. I, I was, I said, <laughs> I said, really? I said, because I was standing here 
it all the time. And I, you know, I know it was user error. A hundred bucks, I was standing in the wrong spot, take it to the bank, right? But I said to him, oh, I'm sorry. I really thought I was standing in the right spot. I don't know how I missed it. He goes, oh, you sweetie, don't you worry. Come on over with me. And he brings me over and there's this <laughs> nine person van and he looks at the guy and he says, hey, Charlie, can you take this pretty lady out to the Marriott? And I'm like, what planet am I on? Like, are you kidding me? I just, I, I just was like, what? And I said, how do I pay for this? He's like, ma'am, we're just going to bring you to the hotel. And I was just like, this is nuts. It's nuts. It's so amazing. Everybody is so nice and so helpful and so happy to be there. I didn't re- run into one. It was like, well, when you leave New Jersey, that does surprise you in New York. It does. <laughs> I have to say. <laughs> Everybody loves a touch of Southern hospitality. It right? is the truth. It is. I mean, but you, when you think of the extent of the people that you have working for you during that concentrated period of time and the level of all of them being happy and gracious and willing to, I'm sure, answer the same question five thousand times where is the d bus to the marriott right there sweetie where the big sign says it right like you know what i'm saying but they say it to you like they've never heard the question before (laughs) you know that i think that's one of the beautiful things about high point uh you know of course you have you mentioned las vegas market earlier and they're so used to big groups coming in there and i really don't even know how they do concierge out there but in high point it's a town of 100,000 people that's welcoming 75,000 people uh, twice a year. And it's so crazy. we do have all of our workers that we hire. I mean, here in the Market Authority, we're a staff of about 10, and we're going to expand to a staff of about 250 during market. And so these are people who do it twice a year. They come in for the training the Saturday before, but they're returning. They're going to take a week off of their job, their regular jobs throughout the year, and they're so excited to see that person who they haven't seen for six months and ask them how their dog was doing or they brought a recipe you know that they were talking about last time (laughs) the bus hosts they make sure that they always get the same line again because they want to see those same people Uh, i love those stories i it's it's and the thing is if i hadn't been there i would be like come on (laughs) it is a special it is a special experience it really is a special experience in addition to the business that you can do with finding and sourcing the products that are best for your client in addition to the meaningful conversations that you can have with your colleagues and of course the CEUs and the presentations and all of the other icing on the cake things. It's just a very amazing experience. It really truly is. And Ashley, my hat's off to you and to your entire team at the level that you. you execute it truly. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. So, and ladies, thank you so much for your help and advice. I just can't stand, you know, the whole, like, get the sep- separate set of cards and the <laughs> download the cam card <laughs> app and making sure you plan your rainy days for the buildings. I mean, these are these are genius. And I will just want to just say, I think, too, because this is important, um, the questions that you mentioned, Jeannie, that you when you go to a showroom, if you're a new baby designer, your minimum opening order number, your freight cap, your minimum yearly spend, the IMAP pricing, um, if they if it's a retail pricing, what, what the retail, what the non-stocking dealer is, what the stocking dealer is, uh, do you sell online, where do you sell online, and is there an uh, IMAP pricing policy in place? So thank you, thank you for these very important tips and advice. Yeah. And I, I just, I, I, you know what, I can't wait to see all three of you in another month or so. And everybody else, please make sure that you find Ashley and her team and you thank them when you're down there for the tremendous job that she does in coordinating this massive effort and making us all feel so happy and welcome and delighted to be there. Thanks, Ashley. Absolutely. We just want to say thank you for coming when we see you. Uh, Luann, if I can real quick just run over, of course, highpointmarket.org, we said, is the website. If you want to reach out to us, info at highpointmarket.org, and then phone is 336-869-1000. Love it, love it, love it. Thank you, ladies. Some pretty awesome advice, wasn't it? I hope by listening to Ashley, Lisa, and Jeannie, you feel inspired to join us in High Point. Then when you cross paths with Lisa and Jeannie, give them a big hug for all the terrific tips that you learned from them. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me today. How about for today's decision? Why don't you get out your calendar and put High Point Market on it? Come join us this year. We'd love to see you. 
Have an excellent day. Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.